Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by collision theory. You should then be able to use collision theory to explain the effect of reactant concentration and gas pressure on the rate of a reaction. This is the first video looking at rates of reaction. Rates of reaction is also called reaction kinetics. Now different chemical reactions take place at different rates. For example, a sparkler is a rapid chemical reaction, whereas rusting is extremely slow. And even the same reaction can occur at different rates if we change the conditions. Now the rate of a chemical reaction can be explained by using collision theory. And collision theory has three main parts that you need to understand. Firstly, in order for particles to react, they must collide. If particles do not collide, then they cannot react. Secondly, when particles react, chemical bonds must be broken. And as we saw on the energetics topic, breaking chemical bonds requires energy, and scientists call this the activation energy. So in order for a reaction to happen, particles must collide with enough energy to start breaking the chemical bonds. If the collision does not have enough energy, then the particles cannot react, and instead they simply bounce off each other. Now I should point out that we're going to be looking at activation energy in much more detail in later videos. Lastly, in order for a reaction to take place, particles must collide in the correct orientation. In the reaction I'm showing here, the atoms in green must collide for a reaction to happen. So in the left hand diagram, the particles are in the correct orientation and a reaction may take place. However, in the right-hand diagram, the particles are in the incorrect orientation, so this collision is ineffective and a reaction will not take place. So, in order to react, particles must collide with sufficient energy and in the correct orientation, and the rate of a reaction is proportional to the number of effective collisions per second, in other words, the frequency of effective collisions. Okay, now one way to increase the rate of a reaction is to increase the concentration of the reactants and we can explain that by using collision theory. I'm showing you here a chemical reaction in which the reactants are in solution, and I'm showing the water molecules as light blue circles. As you can see, reactant molecules shown as A are not colliding, so they're not reacting. The reactants in collision B are colliding with an incorrect orientation. This is not an effective collision, and a reaction does not take place. Reactants in collision C have the correct orientation, but insufficient energy. So again, this is not an effective collision, and a reaction does not take place. Reactants in collision D are colliding with the correct orientation and with sufficient energy. So this is an effective collision, and a reaction takes place. Now as we said before, we can increase the rate of the reaction by increasing the concentration of the reactants. At a higher concentration, we have more reactant particles in the same volume. Because the reactant particles are closer together, we have an increased chance of collisions taking place. In other words, we'll have an increased frequency of collisions. Some of these collisions will be effective, leading to a reaction, and this means that the rate of reaction will increase. Now we've been looking at a reaction taking place in solution. However, many reactions take place as gases. In this case, we can increase the rate of reaction by increasing the gas pressure. Increasing the pressure makes the particles closer together, and again, this increases the frequency of collisions, leading to an increased rate of reaction. In the next video, we look at how to measure the rate of a reaction.